LaQuint Allen made second team all ACC last season. He's set up to have an even bigger 2024. You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we are going over the Syracuse football running backs, why I believe LaQuinn Allen is set up to have a monster 2024 season on the heels of being all ACC second team last year. That's right. I think LaQuinn Allen is going to have a very, very strong 2024. We're also going to talk about the backups behind LaQuinn Allen and how they're very versatile and complement each other extremely well. So LaQuinn Allen may not, may not need 245 plus carries next season for this team to be great. And then we're going to talk about the future running backs on this team in 2024 recruiting. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Let's go over LaQuint Allen. Last season, he was second team, all ACC. He is six foot, 200 pounds, with two years of college eligibility left. Now, last season was his first full year as a starter, as a starter. And we saw bits and pieces in 2022 that suggested that he was going to have a strong campaign last year. If you recall, he was very good against that Wagner game. He broke off that long run. And then he had a very productive bowl game against Minnesota when Sean Tucker sat out that game. So there were some expectations for LaQuint Allen last year. And for the most part, I think at minimum, he lived up to the expectations. You can argue that he even exceeded those expectations. His first full year as a starter, he had over a 1,000 yards. 1,064 is the exact number. Over four yards per carry on 245 attempts, 10 total touchdowns, and 38 catches. So this is someone who not only is good at running the ball, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. And all that was good for second team, all ACC. So this is already one of the more productive running backs in the conference. I think he's going to have a stronger season next year. I really do. And last year, if he if he if he did a copy and paste from last season to this season, we'd all be pretty happy, at least I would, but I think he's going to be even better. First off, I want to take out one game from his stat line. And I know it's not really fair in the grand scheme of things, but this game was such an outlier and it was the bowl game last season for LaQuint Allen where he had 20 carries for two yards. That is a complete outlier game in a negative manner and nothing went right in that bowl game for Syracuse. It was over very quickly. LaQuint Allen, 20 carries, two yards. If you remove that game, so essentially his stats going into the bowl game, his final numbers would have looked much better than what they already looked. And they're they're pretty good as is. But his yards per carry would have been over 4.7 instead of what it really was, which was 4.3. So if you just eliminate that really, really bad game, he's already going to be more efficient. I think it's fair to assume that Next year, his yards per carry is going to be closer to 5 than 4.3. So 4.7, 4.8 maybe. The point being is that his yards per carry, his efficiency is bound to go up. Another reason why the efficiency is going to go up and why I believe he's going to have a monster season, take a look at the quarterback. Kyle McCord. Take a look at the weapons around him. Aronde Gadsden, Jackson Meek, Zed Haynes. We got Justice Ross Simmons, Dan Villari. We, we get all of it, all the weapons, right, on, on Syracuse football. And I've gone over on another podcast, the, the quarterbacks and the, and the receivers and the tight ends. All that is to say and how it relates to the Quinn Allen, you can't really stack the box like you could have last year. Especially when Garrett Schrader got hurt last season, teams could stack the box. 
they already were stacking the box, quite frankly, even when Schrader was healthy because Schrader's more of a running quarterback. It was just the element of the fact that he can keep the ball. Now, you can't load up the box because if you do, Kyle McCord can beat you over top. They have a quarterback who can really sling it. And they have the pass catchers on the outside, along with Aronde Gadsden, who can, well, produce. They can produce. They can get open in one-on-ones. So you can't stack the box to stop LaQuint Allen. So he is going to be more efficient, which is going to lead to a better season for him. I would say that he's going to get in my opinion, fewer carries than 245. That is a big, big number. I think in Sean Tucker's biggest season with Syracuse, he had 246. 245 is a a lot of carries. I would say it's going to be probably in the lower 200s. So my final stat line for him in terms of an expectation is 210 carries for 1,100 yards and around 30 catches. So while it's not a huge statistical improvement, I think he's going to be much, much more efficient. And it's going to make him be, he's going to be a better player, right? Now, if you give him the ball more and his efficiency goes up, then that's when you could truly get into that monster, monster season that he could very well be set up for. There's just a lot of weapons around him and we're going to talk about later in the podcast about the backups that are behind him that this team quite frankly doesn't need to give LaQuint Allen the ball 240 250 times next season in order to win games they can probably give him 210 to 220 keep him fresh throughout the season he'll be more efficient and he's going to have a better season as far as a future outlook for LaQuint Allen barring him having a Crazy, crazy, absurd, all-American year. And I don't think he's going to have that type of season. I think he's going to stay in college for another season. That's just my opinion. I don't think he's quite yet on the NFL level just yet. And in all likelihood, that would mean that he would also be the starter for 2025. Now, of course, we live in this new age of college sports where the transfer portal is very real. And I'm not here to suggest that LaQuinn Allen is going to transfer after this season. That's not what I am suggesting. But barring him transferring, barring him go to the NFL draft, like I said, he has two years of eligibility left. Next season, he should also be the starting running back for this team. And I'd be happy if he was the starting running back in 2025 because he was second team all ACC last year. He should have an even better this, even better year this season. He could do a whole lot worse than LaQuinn Allen, and you really can't do much better than LaQuinn Allen. I think that next tier is starting to get into NFL caliber running backs, which you know maybe LaQuinn Allen can become one day. Just don't like don't I don't think he's there just yet, but that's okay. He's still got two years to get to that level. Coming up, we're gonna talk about the backup running backs on Syracuse football who can really shoulder the load off of LaQuinn Allen, which would allow him to be more efficient, as I have said, because these two players that I'm going to talk about, it's like thunder and lightning. One of them can really run and one of them can really catch. It's one thing to watch baseball on TV that at times can get boring, quite frankly, but going to a game in person is an awesome experience. And I'm looking forward to watching the Reds for the rest of the summer. The way I'll watch them in person is by using game time. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace in major league baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. All you have to do is go to game time and search the team you want to see if you're choosing. It could be MLB or any league for that matter, and ticket options will appear right away. My favorite part is the all-in pricing feature. Toggling this feature shows the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron with discussion on the upcoming season and the ever-changing ever-changing landscape of college athletics, including conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, new college football expanded playoffs, and more. Locked On College Football is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Olsen. On today's show, we are going over the Syracuse football running backs. We discussed why LaQuinn Allen is going to have an even better 2024 campaign. Of course, in 2023, he was second team all ACC. But this upcoming season, I think while he might not get the same number of carries and touches that he had last year, he is going to be much more efficient. Teams can no longer stack the box against him. And also, quite frankly, I don't envision him having a game where he has 20 carries for only two yards like he did in the bowl game. So efficiency bound to go up for LaQuinn Allen. Now let's get into the backup running backs for this team. And in my opinion, these are two really solid backup running backs where when you combine the duo together, it just makes so much sense for this team. Let's start off with a true freshman in Yasin Willis. He is six foot one, 225 pounds from New Jersey. He was a 2024 three star recruit. He was originally committed to Pitt, but then flipped to Syracuse. Shout out to those who flipped to Syracuse. We love everyone who flips to Syracuse, just not those who flip against Syracuse. Of course, we saw him first in the spring game where he had 11 carries for over 90 yards and a touchdown. He was a beast in the spring game. And what really stands out about Yassine Willis is the size. Six foot one, 225 pounds. That's not just college size. It's not, right? He's a true freshman, 18 years old. No, that's NFL size. I'm not joking. I'm not being hyperbolic. Six foot one, 225. That is NFL size. I don't know how familiar you guys might be with body mass index. The abbreviation is is BMI. But in the NFL, you want, especially if you want a workhorse running back, most workhorse running backs in the NFL, the guys that you're going to draft in fantasy football, have a BMI of 30. That's what they typically have, 30, okay, or at least 30. Yasin Willis's BMI as an 18-year-old true freshman in college if his size is accurate, which is six foot one, 225 pounds, is 29.7. Already 29.7. Compare it to Sean Tucker. When Sean Tucker measured at the combine, which was in 2023, when he measured at the combine, his BMI was 30.6. Keep in mind, Sean Tucker had been in college for three years. So this kid, Yassine Willis, what jumps out to me is the size. So how is he going to be used? Well, at least as a true freshman, right? You've got your bell cow and LaQuint Allen. We're going to get to the next running back in a second. Yassine Willis is a, at least for his true freshman year, a short yardage running back. So third and one, third and two, third and three, right? Near the goal line, near the one, two, three yard line, right? That's when you'll see Yassine Willis really shine in the short yardage situations because he already has the size to be able to handle it. Now, next up, the perfect complement, a perfect complement, and why I believe these are two quality backups for Syracuse football running backs. Will Nixon. He's five foot 11, 185 pounds. He was a three star transfer running back from Washington. He is the son of of Jeff Nixon, the new Syracuse football offensive coordinator and running backs coach. Now, he was a three-star recruit out of high school as a wide receiver, where he spent two years at Nebraska as a wide receiver. He didn't do much production-wise, and then he transferred over to Washington, where he transitioned into a running back. However, when you have a player that transitions from wide receiver to running back, You already know by default that he is a pretty good pass catcher, right? He's pretty good. Maybe he wasn't the the division one level wide receiver that anyone hoped he would be, 
But at very minimum, he was able to make Division I football in a Power 5 conference as a wide receiver. Now he transitioned to running back, where in the last two seasons, he has 54 carries for 290 yards. That's about that's over five yards a carry. And he also has 21 total catches in that span. The way I see Will Nixon used is because you have LaQuint Allen, who's your do-it-all workhorse back, and you have Yassine Willis, who's a short yardage back, Will Nixon's role is going to be, well, receiving. He is a receiving third down option for this team out of the backfield. So overall, when you look at the backups and how they complement to LaQuint Allen, I've already alluded to this. LaQuint Allen is a all-purpose running back. He has the capability to be on the field for all three downs, right? We have seen it with LaQuint Allen over the course of an entire season. But part of the reason why I believe he's going to have maybe less carries than last year, I believe in the lower end of the 200s, but he'll be more efficient, is because you have one guy who can really be the the punisher for this team out of the backfield and you've seen Willis as a backup option. And then you have Will Nixon who can catch the ball out of the backfield. So you don't need LaQuint Allen to be on the field for all three downs throughout the entirety of the game. He doesn't need to play 90% of the snaps for this team to be successful because the backups behind him have different skill sets that no matter the situation, you can put one of them on the field. If it's third and one, you can use the scene Willis. If it's third and 10, you can put in Will Nixon and you can trust that he can get open as a running back and stoop for the first down possibly, right? So overall, this is a very, very solid trio of running backs that Syracuse football has for next season. I'm excited about this unit. I'm excited about this unit a lot because last year, they didn't really have much behind LaQuinn Allen. This year, I think the backups are much better. LaQuinn Allen going into another year of college should be even better. This is going to be a fun group to watch. And with Kyle McCord under center, you can't really stack the box against them. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with the Syracuse football running back room. Now coming up, we're going to talk about some future names for Syracuse football to keep an eye on. Who could be the next future or who could be the next running back for this team. All right, so future running backs for Syracuse football beyond the 2024 season. Let's go over a couple of recruits that the Orange brought in for 2024. Maybe they redshirt, maybe they don't, but these are future names to keep an eye on. And let's start off with Malachi James. He is 5'11", 195 pounds from New Jersey, a 2024 three-star athlete recruit who has experience playing both running back and wide receiver. In fact, he was an all-conference player at both positions. So already a versatile player in the wings for Syracuse football. And what really stands out about Malachi James is the speed. Speed is the name of the game with this recruit. He was the New Jersey Track Athlete of the Year last season. Okay? A lot of recruits, just by their ability, their natural talent, their natural gifts, are going to run track. It's not uncommon to see that. Right? I know we say guys like, you know, the the extreme example like Tyreek Hill has has track speed. No, no, no. no. Tyreek Hill does not have track speed. He is Olympic track speed, right? So the point that I'm making with Malachi James is that when I say that he has track speed, it's not just the the natural track speed that a lot of these recruits have. A lot of them run fast 40-yard dash times, right? But no, Malachi James was the track athlete of the year in New Jersey. So this guy is a true burner at the next level. Now with the depth at this position, right? We went over the top three, right? LaQuinn Allen isn't going anywhere. Yassine Willis is a true freshman, but because of his size, already he seems like someone who's going to see the field in day one. I don't think he's going to redshirt this season. He's playing. And then you have Will Nixon, who is an experienced pass catching running back from Washington, who's played in the national championship game. With that depth ahead of Malachi James, 
I don't see him getting many reps at running back. I don't. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Plenty of players will redshirt in their freshman seasons. I think if he does see the field, it's going to be as a specialist. A kick returner, a punt returner. Now, I know that they got Trevor Pena back there, but still, Malachi James may get a look as a special teamer for this upcoming season. I just don't think he's going to crack that top three, right? Not yet, but that's okay. He's certainly a name to keep an eye on in the coming years for this team. I don't know if he'll ever get to the point where he's a workhorse running back, but he's got track speed, like legitimate track speed. Maybe he plays a little bit of wide receiver too as well. But for now, he is listed as a running back on the Syracuse football roster online. So I'm counting him as a running back. We'll see how it goes for this upcoming season for Malachi James. But definitely someone to keep an eye on. Definitely someone to be excited about down the line. Just not so sure about this upcoming season. Next up, we got Jaden Hart. He is 5'11", 200 pounds from Indiana. He's a three-star recruit, and he was a top 10 prospect in the state heading into this season. Now, he also ran track in high school, but like I said, there is a difference between just a, a natural, gifted athlete running track and someone who is legitimately a track superstar, which is Malachi James, right? Now, Jaden Hart is a kid that is probably going to redshirt for this upcoming season, and he is someone that we have to keep an eye on down the road. That's just the brief summary about Jaden Hart. There's not too much out there about him. So that is it for Syracuse football running back, future running backs to keep an eye on. Malachi James and Jaden Hart, two true freshman running backs for this upcoming season. They probably will both redshirt, so they won't lose that year of eligibility. And going forward, if they stick with the program, they will probably eventually see the field for significant playing time. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On College Football Podcast from NIL deals to never-ending conference realignment rumors. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. You can find the link to Locked On College Football so you don't need to search. It's in the description below, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. So now on tomorrow's podcast on Locked On Syracuse. We're going to have on Neil Adler from Inside the Loud House. We're going to talk about the quarterback room on this team. Now, I did a video earlier in the summer. I did a podcast about the quarterbacks, right? And we know who's going to start. We know who's going to start. That's Kyle McCord. But who's going to be the backup? It's an open competition, according to Fran Brown. So me and Neil, we're going to have a long discussion about the quarterbacks on the roster, whether we are excited, whether we are worried. So you're going to want to check out that podcast tomorrow. Also, coming up, we are about 24, 25 days until Syracuse football kicks off. So in the meantime, future podcasts are mostly going to be football unless basketball news were to come about in the coming days and weeks. It's mostly going to be football content on this podcast. We went over a lot of the position groups already, but we still got the offensive line. We still got linebackers. We still got specialists to go over. And then we're going to talk about some of the main storylines for this upcoming season. And there's a lot of them, obviously. Aronde Gadsden coming back from injury. Kyle McCord, and a Big Ten quarterback, right? Fran Brown, his his first time as a head coach. How is he actually going to coach? We know he can recruit, but how is he going to coach? We're going to set the expectations. And then on the eve of college football season, I'm going to give a final record prediction for this team. Now, I, I don't know if it's going to change, but I'm going to give my final record prediction for now. I'm at eight and four, but we'll see. If that changes between now and August 31st, which will be against Ohio. I can't wait for football season. We are almost here. It's been a long off season. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a really, really good year. 
especially because, well, what we talked about a lot on this podcast already, the Syracuse football running back room is really strong. It has a lot of talent, not just the top end in LaQuinn Allen, but also the backups, right? You got Yassine Willis, who's your Thunder backup. You got your Will Nixon, who is your Lightning backup. You've got two guys waiting in the wings in Jaden Hart and Malachi James. So going forward, this is a running back unit to be excited about. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you know right away when I am dropping the next podcast. And everyone, take care.